Welcome back to the channel. This little video is going to be on a comparison of the Mega MTR105 against the Fluke 9062 for motor phase rotation and supply phase rotation from the little inverter drive. So I have the MTR105 set up to do a direction of rotation on the motor. So the leads are already connected up. I'm using the leads from the Fluke 9062 for both tests. I'll put a picture up of the connections onto the motor that we're set up here. And all we need to do is give the motor a twist. And there you see we have our L1, L2, L3 for a clockwise rotation. And just to show that it, it works, we'll go back the other way. And there you can see my direction of rotation changes when I spin the motor in an anti-clock direction. Okay, so we'll pull leads out of the MTR, put them into the fluke. Oh, nearly. <laughs> so the MTR connections run right to left, L1, L2, L3. And all the other rotation meters I have go the opposite way, L1 this side going L2, L3. So uh, yeah, you can cut yourself out if you're switching between instruments there. So what you have to do with this instrument at the same time, if I just spin the motor, you can see I'm getting no reaction. What I actually have to do is press the button at the same time, so it becomes a two-handed operation. Whereas with the MTR, it's um, fully automatic. This it's not, and my fingers are going to be in the way, aren't they? So if we can, uh, we can so press the button there, spin the motor, and you can see for our one L two three connection, I've got clockwise. And if I spin it back the other way, you can see it's flashing at anti-clock. Uh, you will also notice that with this instrument, I don't need to spin the motor as much. I just do it a half a turn. Actually, gets the light to click on. Obviously, keep spinning it, you can keep getting a response. It seems to be a little bit more sensitive than the MTR one zero five. Okay, so we'll reset this up and we'll measure the output from the inverter and see how we get along with that. Okay, hopefully you can see everything. We'll start off with the 9062 this time. The inverter is on, we're set to minimum. So you can see there's no response phase-wise. So start seeing a little bit of response there. Um, we're on four. Let's see what we've got. So we're on twenty percent there, and you can see we've got a good response. Let's zoom in. Okay, so we uh, you can see a bit hopefully there. You can see we haven't got direction of rotation. To get the direction of rotation on this one. I have to actually press the button in, um, but you can see it can't make head and tail out of it. So it's not working. It's giving me phase presence, but not direction of rotation at there's 10%. We'll try just thinking about it. 15. 15, it's a little bit better. Still flickering a little bit. Let's go 20, and at 20% 20 it's pretty much there. Uh, we're on 30 now, and you can see at 30% it's consistently giving me a reading, he says, as it flashes away. You'd, you'd understand that, I think you could take that as working properly, really. The intermittent flipping of the left light. It still does it, 35%. Maybe just the way it's uh, we're at max now. Uh, so max, you can see everything is steady now. Whereas before the lights were all flickering. Let's see, uh, it's 40%. 
Flex a little bit, 35. Yeah, so uh, it works reasonably well. Certainly seems to work a little bit better than, than the MTR105, but we'll plug that in and just give a quick recap of how that one operates. Okay, so we're set up on three phase voltage on the MTR105 at minimum. We'll go up to there's five. And you can see the erratic behavior on the display and no phase rotation indication. 20 there. So you can see it very, very unsettled. That's, that's 35 where the, oh, yeah, that's 35. So that's 35 percent where the Fluke 9062 started to become quite a bit more stable. Um, you can see there's a little bit of stability there, I guess, but not enough for it to pick up the phase rotation. He says it flashes up to a thousand volts. Fantastic. Yeah, it's just not stable there, is it? Uh, we're at 40% there. Still not really happy. 45. And 50 maximum output. Leave it there for a few seconds, but you can see we're still not getting phase rotation. Now I think this is actually due to the output on this inverter. So what I'm going to do is hook up an oscilloscope onto the inverter output and just see if I can capture some data in order to be able to send to Mega. Okay, so you can see we've set up an oscilloscope here. The inverter is turned up to its maximum output, uh, 50 hertz, and you can see I'm actually getting a horrible square wave out of this, and I think it's that that's causing the issues with the MTR105. It's perhaps a bit too sensitive towards this kind of output. If you had a more professional industrial inverter, you would get a better sine wave out you know, instead of this monstrosity. Yeah, so hopefully you can see this a little bit better. You can see on the, I've actually got a reading of four kilohertz on the channel here, which is just too much for the MTR105. It's too much for the other instruments as well, but maybe they've got better filtration um, in with it. You, know, you can quite clearly see the square wave output of the inverter, which is probably what's upsetting the instrument. So there you can see there's my FFT of the output of the inverter. And you can see quite clearly that uh, there's an awful lot of noise on that. You've got your nominal 50 hertz coming out. Okay, so there we're set up. So our peak is actually picking up on 40 hertz, but you can see that's quite a messy... Uh, Oh, yeah, that one. So yeah, there's a big band, about four kilohertz there. Probably a pair in every four kilohertz, is it? That's eight, yeah. So it'll be 12 up here. 12. Yeah, and you can see, uh, you can see that repeating band in the output, which is not brilliant. So that's 35%. Now you can see it's always there, and you can see it's actually uh, let's turn cursors off. So you can see amplitude-wise, these peaks are very, very close to the main 50 hertz amplitude, which is probably what's upsetting the instrumentation, I would imagine. Okay, so I'm reasonably comfortable that, in actual fact, there's nothing that much wrong with the instrument. If you put it on industrial apparatus, I'm pretty sure it'll be fine. I think it's just this small, cheap little inverter that I've got that uh, does the job for a home user to run his lathe, but there's not very pretty output at all. Okay, so that's it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope you found it useful, and I'll see you again in the next video.